Hey everyone, Ronnie Chavez here to bring you another 10 parkour moves video. The last video I did was on 10 beginning parkour vaults. Well, naturally, this video is going to be on 10 intermediate parkour vaults. So, before learning any of the vaults in this video, I strongly recommend that you have learned and mastered all the vaults in the 10 parkour vaults for beginners. Now in this video, I'm going to be showing you the 10 moves plus short little 1 to 2 minute tutorials on each move, but I'll also have full in-depth tutorials on a lot of these moves in the description below. So if you want more details on each move I do today, then be sure to check out the description and watch those videos. But otherwise, let's jump into the first move. So the first vault that we're going to be doing is the cast vault. So the cast vault is based off of any generic vault like a side vault or a Kong vault. The difference is, is where you're starting from. You don't get to use your feet on the cast vault. You're going to be jumping from your hips. So with the cast vault, this is where you're in the position of holding your body up with your arms and then resting kind of on your hips on the bar that you're going to be doing it on. And then you're simply going to kind of let your body come in a little bit and then pop out to give yourself kind of some jump, some boost. Um, you're going to kick your legs back really hard, try and get, get your hips up as high as possible because the higher you can get your hips, the easier it will be to pull your feet through. And then you're just going to use your arms to pull yourself through, pull yourself over. Now beginning this vault, you can start by just popping to the side like a side vault. And then once you get comfortable with that, just like learning a Kong vault, you can slowly work your way till you're doing it center. Our next vault is going to be the diving Kong vault. Now, you've learned the Kong vault or monkey vault, which is where you just basically jump over an obstacle and bring your feet straight through your arms. Well, the diving Kong vault is doing the same exact motion, but starting out, well, in a dive. So you're going to be diving out towards the object, generally a little bit farther away than you'd normally do a Kong, and then you'll be planting your hands and bringing your feet through once again. The main trick with this one is to really make sure that you get your hips up because it's a lot harder to get your hips up in a diving motion. So as you run into it, you really want to jump hard and then the leg that's kind of kicking you up, you want to kick that leg hard so you can really get your hips up. But don't get your hips up too high so you're not completely inverted. Otherwise, it might be hard to bring your feet back down. The easiest way to start learning a diving Kong vault is to just do your normal Kong vault and then slowly work your way back. And you can actually even use a step up or use a lower object to practice the dive Kong because it's going to make it a little bit easier and safer in case you don't get your feet underneath you or you need some practice. Also, I'd recommend learning in a gym if that's available to you, but it's not necessary as you're not going completely upside down so you don't have to worry about landing on your head as long as you don't go upside down. So. Don't go upside down. So for our next vault, it's a variation of the Diving Kong vault, and I'm going to need a new location to get there. So to get to our new location, I'm going to teleport doing a perfect 360. If you do a perfect jump 360, it actually breaks the laws of physics, and you can teleport to the location you're thinking of. So let's head over there. All right, here we are at the park, and for this next move, it's going to be based on the Diving Kong Vault. What's, once again, this is the Double Kong Vault. So it's just like the Diving Kong Vault, only you're going to be starting with a plant close to your takeoff, going into the dive, and then planting again. So it's doing like two Kong Vaults in one. Main thing to know with this one is the first initial launch is meant to really just launch you up in the air, get your hips up, and then your second plant of your hands is to help you get your feet back down so that you don't land on your head since you're pretty inverted on a double Kong vault. You also want to have a lot of speed when doing this move, um, especially if you're doing it a longer distance. The more speed you have, the less effort it's going to take on your initial launch and on your second landing for the double Kong, but you can practice initially doing a short double Kong and just coming to your feet on top of the object or picnic table, whatever you're doing it on. So there's how you do the double Kong vault. Let's move back to our first location for the rest of them. All right, back to our first location to move on to the fourth intermediate parkour vault. And this vault is going to be based off of the turn vault or the 360 vault that we learned in our last video. This one we're just going to add an extra spin and call it the 540 vault or reverse 540 vault depending on the variation you use. So the two variations I like to do for the 540 vault is the first one I'm going to take off just like I would do a turn vault 
only as I'm turning in the air, I'm kind of setting and doing the full turn vault motion, but before I start dropping back down, I push off and wrap a full extra 360 to the 180 turn I've just done. So it ends up being a 540. The other variation I do is based off of a reverse vault, which is very similar to the 360 vault. Mainly it's just the way you take off is instead of taking off with your hands forward, like so, like a turn vault, if my right hand is my support vault on the turn vault, then I'm going to turn it over this way and I'm going to spin over the opposite direction. So it's almost like you're cheating into the spin and jumping backwards as you take off and spin around. With the 540 vault, we've broken efficient vaults, so now we're getting into more freestyle, free running territory. And that's what a lot of the rest of the vaults will be like at this point because the main fundamental parkour moves for efficiency, you're all going to be able to find in your beginning parkour vaults, and it's all based on how advanced they are, depending on how high you're going, how far of a distance you're vaulting, things like that. So just that's just something to keep in mind. Let's move on to our next vault, which is going to be variations, once again, of the turn vault, but where we're landing back on the object on the opposite side, we're going to start with the reverse turn vault. So the reverse is basically um, doing the reverse vault, only instead of spinning all the way, you're just simply catching yourself into a cat leap position again. The main thing with the reverse turn vault is that you really want to make sure that you pop your feet up because this one it can be a little bit more risky to actually clip your feet because you're not trying to launch over the rail you're trying to stay holding on to it and keep your body close so you can land back on the other side from where you're vaulting and then once you've pushed your feet over with one hand you're going to reach your other hand out to grab and aim your feet towards the spot you want to land and catch yourself in a cat leap. While we're doing turn vaults let's move on to one more turn vault variation which is the lazy turn vault. It's when you're doing a lazy vault over the rail and then spinning back the opposite direction to catch yourself in a cat leap. The main thing you need to think of when doing this move is that as you're kicking your close leg over and popping your feet over, you really want to have your feet up and have your hips ready to pop back this way. So that as you plant your hands and you start going over, you're kind of doing a hula hoop motion with your hips as your legs are up in the air. So that way you can pop your hips out back this way and reach with your feet and grab on again with your hands. I'd practice this one on flat ground first because it is a lot harder to get your feet all the way back in time and you don't want to smack your shins on the cement ledge. So just practice it a few times getting that reverse spinning motion from the lazy vault and then go ahead and try it when you're ready. Alright moving on to one of my favorite vaults, the dash vault. The dash vault can be used in a variety of ways. It can be used very fast like the speed vault or it can be more flashy and added with spins and things like that. Either way the dash vault's a little bit scary to do because you're jumping over the object, leaning back, planting your hands down, and hoping you hit your hands right so that you don't fall on your butt. That's the main thing is planting your hands and making sure your hands don't slip off the rail. You're dash vaulting over, otherwise because you're leaning back on takeoff it could mean you're going straight to your butt or hitting your head on this. So the dash vault isn't necessarily hard to learn. The best way I would recommend to start learning it is by simply jumping over the object and not learning it on a handrail. I would recommend that you learn it on something a bit wider so you don't have as much of a risk of missing your hands on the touchdown. But what you want to start out doing is jumping over the object with no hands. Just get comfortable with the height in relation to your jumping ability and then from there, once you get comfortable jumping over it, you can slowly start trying to place one hand down or two hands down as you clear over it. And eventually as you get comfortable with your hand placement, you can start leaning back, bringing your feet out a little bit more, and it's all just a progression from there. Moving on to our next intermediate parkour vault, we're going to do the reverse Kong. So this isn't really anything like a Kong vault. It's just called a reverse Kong because if you play a Kong vault in reverse, it's almost like the beginning setup of a Kong vault. So basically with this move, you're running towards an obstacle, jumping, turning, leaning back, kind of like the dash vault. I'd actually recommend you learn a dash vault before learning the reverse Kong. And then so you're almost jumping over it like a dash vault, but then you're turning your body over, doing a 180, to reach towards the object, to plant your hands off of it, and then push away and land back on your feet or do an extra 180 spin 
however you prefer doing it, is basically how the reverse Kong is. So there's two ways I like to take off with the reverse Kong. The first one is almost like a turn vault motion where I'm jumping for my right leg and instead of doing a turn vault, I'm actually just jumping over the object without my hands yet until I'm turned pretty much a full 180 and then I'm pushing away and using my opposite leg to kind of kick my hips up into the air so I can get a nice push out motion. The other variation I do is still taking off my right leg but it's spinning the other direction, turning the other direction for the reverse tonk and how I like to kick my left leg is I like to kick it out like this um, to almost to my right and twist my hips and what this does is it creates this kind of cool flary flashy motion so that by the time you get around and push away you have a nice clean straight body and uh, and I just like the way it looks and feels. Alright for our last two vaults I don't know if they can actually be classified as vaults because you don't actually clear over the obstacle you actually are using the obstacle to plant your hands on it and do a little McFly McTwist tricky thingy mabob so anyways what the first one will be is the palm spin. Now the palm spin is actually very similar to the turn vault in your takeoff. The difference is instead of going over the handrail, you're actually going to be starting a turn vault and then you keep spinning and land on the same side you came from. So what's happening is for me, I take off with my right hand. That's my support arm. That's going to pretty much be holding on the entire time. And then my left arm is going to be giving me a nice initial push to get my body up in the air. Now when I also do this, I'm not going up above the rail at all. I'm actually pushing away from it, trying to keep my body away from it. So I end up doing the rotation right here. So it's almost like a flip because it's a little bit inverted and it's all happening on this side of the object. So you really want to just focus on keeping your body out here and getting around quick. You know, I jump off my right leg and then I kick my left leg and I'm going to be really driving it around because the faster I get around, then the less chance I have of falling face first. Before actually attempting this move in its full glory, I would recommend starting on the end of an object and practicing there because you're less likely going to clip and mess up. So here, I can practice basically the turn vault and come around like that and then slowly, as I get confident and get comfortable with the move, try and bring my center of gravity more out here in this way and kind of bring it towards where there's no rail so I don't have to worry about clipping. Yes, we've done it. We've made it to the last vault. Here it is, the 10th intermediate parkour vault, which may not necessarily be able to be classified as a vault. It's similar to the palm spin in function, is the rail flare or the Italian job. Now this move is similar to a lazy vault starting out, but you're going to be sitting on the rail from the lazy vault and then spinning back around from where you started. So how the rail flare works, there's two variations. The first one is to simply sit on the rail as you spin around and the second variation is to actually let your legs float above it so you don't, your legs don't touch the rail at all and it's only your hands that are supporting you. What you want to practice first when doing this move is uh, starting with the lazy vault we're going to kick onto the handrail and not fully clear over it, but kick this first leg almost onto it like this and you're going to let your other leg follow. And ideally you just want to get to a sitting position and then pop off. So try and get comfortable with that motion where you just get into this position and then jump off. Make sure you're not leaning back too much yet because otherwise that's how you can fall backwards. You can also practice that second half of the motion from just sitting and then just from there, kick one leg over and then the other. The whole time you're just letting your hands support you, kind of hold you up and push your legs up as needed. Um, and then from there as you get comfortable with the, the lazy vault into a sit position and then from sitting, coming back over and then practicing that uh, closing up the gap so that it's more one motion, then eventually you'll be able to spin it all the way around into the Italian job or rail flare. And for the one where you're picking your legs up, this one's going to take a little bit more effort. <clears throat> it's going to take a little bit more technique because you really have to get your legs up and push hard with your arms to keep your legs above it. And you really need to whip your legs around fast because you only have a li limited amount of time to be able to hold your legs up like that before your legs are going to be dropping back down and you risk clipping your feet. So there it is, 10 intermediate parkour vaults or two kind of vaults that may not be vaults, but we'll call them vaults for this video, that 
you should be able to learn after you've learned the 10 beginning vaults in my previous video. Once again, these vaults, some of them are more dangerous than others, so just make sure that you're careful in your training, you have a safe environment, and you have friends with you because it's fun to learn with friends and you guys can help each other, spot each other, and just have a party. So anyways, once again, wanted to remind you guys that I have shirts. This is my green classic logo R shirt, so if you guys love the videos I'm outputting and would like to support my channel, then consider buying a shirt. But otherwise, that's not an option. Just you guys watching my videos makes me super grateful and be sure to subscribe for more tutorials and thank you for watching.